Hi guys, Freddy here. Welcome back to another Rules Breakdown, and this time I'm going to be having a look at Salvage Union. Now this is the 1.5 Kickstart guide. I've already had a look through the 1.2 one on the channel when the Kickstarter was running, but this is an updated one, and there's 12 extra pages in it, so they've added a lot to the game. Also, back at the time, I was considering doing a Rules Breakdown on the game based on that Quick Start guide, but Panny Lines... Um, who created the wonderful Shadow of Mog role-playing game and is writing this along with Alad Lawler, asked me to hold off as they were updating the rules. But we're getting pretty close to the release of the full game, and I'll cover that when I get my copy through, because I did back the Kickstarter. But I thought it was worth having a look through these rules and bringing some attention back to the game, especially as you can now pre-order the game. So there'll be a link to this PDF for the Quick Start Guide in the uh, description down below, and there'll be a link to pre-orders so you can get yourself a copy if you want and i highly recommend it i really like it but you can have a look through the rules as we go through them and see if you think you'll like it as well now salvage union doesn't really have a skill system it has this core mechanic as listed on page 40 of the quick start and basically you roll this anytime you need to do anything now there are various abilities if we go back a couple of pages we can see we have abilities here. So this character can squeeze it in for one of their ability points, and they start off with 10. They can increase a max cargo capacity by one. They can mass field repair, restore up to 12 SP amongst any number of target mechs as long as they have one SP left, so they can repair a bunch of things. And these abilities vary by whatever type of character you've got. The Mechs also have them, so the jackhammer here has things like the comms module, survey scan and rigging arm, all these different abilities they can run. But to activate these and do anything, you use the core mechanic. So you roll 1d20 against this table. So 1d20, we throw, and we get an 11, which is a success. You've achieved your goal without any compromises. When attacking, you've hit the target and deal standard damage. We've got, if you roll a critical 20 here, you've nailed it, you get achieve an additional bonus of your choice to the action, or when dealing damage, you double it. And we've got things down here, tough choices, failures, cascade failure, not only failed, but something has gone terribly wrong. But if you roll and fail, you can re-roll the dice by taking stress if it's your character, or gaining heat if it's your mech you're doing. So if we go back to the salvager, we can see he's got 10 stress. So he can deal with that. He's failed a roll. He wants to push it farther. He gets to re-roll, but he takes a point of stress. Now this, of course, is healed up by resting. The mech itself has a certain amount of heat points, so it's got a heat capacity of 13, the jackhammer. And if you're pushing the mech to do better, re-rolling your dice, you're adding heat to it up to that maximum. The mech itself can cool down by taking a long rest. Initiative is dealt with on pages 44 and 45 of the PDF and is dealt with on this initiative roll table. So if we go back and we roll a d20 again, we have rolled a 12 this time. One player character chosen by the players acts first. Play then passes to the NPC group, and one player chosen by the mediator act, well, uh, acts. And that's how it works. If you roll a critical 20 on your initiative roll, then two players get to go first. Then one uh, opponent, one NPC, then a player, then an opponent, etc. If there's more opponents or more in, uh, players, then at the end, after everybody's acted in sequence, they just keep going until everybody's out of actions. And that's how initiative works. You roll on the initiative roll table, and then it alternates between the winning and losing side. Now we use the core mechanic again for combat. So we're just rolling a d20 on this table. So we throw the d20. We get a 15 this time, so it's a success. Now certain weapons, when you're using them on the mechs, generate heat. So if we go back to the jackhammer here, it's got a green laser. And one of its descriptions here is hot two, which means that every time it's fired, it generates two heat. So the mech heats up. But 
The rules itself works the same way. You're just rolling on the table and seeing whether you hit or not. If you're rolling a 20, you're doing double damage. Now, damage is as listed on the weapon. So the green laser that we fired from the jackhammer here does damage 4 SP. So that's four structural points of damage, which comes straight off the structure points. So if the jackhammer was shooting at, its at itself, as we normally do in these test combats, it would take four points off its structure points. So it'd be down to 14. It can take a bunch more damage, but it's not destroyed. If the green laser was being fired at a character, then it does double damage. So it'd be doing eight points of damage. And if, of course, you rolled a 20, you'd be doing double damage from rolling a 20 on your attack. And if you're rolling that at character, then you'd be doing double, double damage. Also, if you're firing a character scale weapon, their damage is listed in HP, so health points. So the salvager here shooting it himself would do two HP damage. He would take two points off his 10 health. But if he was firing a mech, the damage would be halved. So you'd only be doing a single point of damage. A health, as I said, is listed on the character sheet here as health, or for the mechs as structure points. Now, normally when you take damage beyond your health or your structure points, there's a critical table to roll on. But certain ones, like the jackhammer here, has a reinforced chassis, so rolls on its own separate table. But normally, if we flick on a few pages, to page 5051, we can see the critical damage table and the critical injury table. So if your mech takes more than its uh, structure points in damage, then you're rolling on this table. And throw. You roll a 17 core damage. The mech chassis is damaged and inoperational. If you had rolled a 20, the mech would be somehow intact. It's one SP and continues to operate, so fully operational. We've got module damage, we've got system destruction, we've got catastrophic damage, so the system's totally uh, the mech's totally destroyed and you need to eject to survive. And we've got the critical to injury tables. When they're reduced to zero health, they're rolling on it. So taking the 17 as well. Unconsciousness. You are stable at zero hit points, but unconscious and cannot move or take actions until you gain at least one HP. You regain consciousness naturally in one hour with one HP. Because it's just a quick start, it has no section on advancing your character and improving their abilities and gaining new abilities. But what it does have is the sections on repairing your mech. So obviously any damage you've received, you get to repair, you get to heal up your pilots if they've taken anything, gives you all the times for that. But it does have this section on salvaging, because obviously in a game called Salvage Union, salvaging is a massively important part of the game. So it talks you through here, what is scrap? Salvage condition on pages uh, 54 and 55. Salvaging uh, found items. But then we've got tables here for salvaging a mech. Because if you've destroyed an enemy mech, you get to salvage and see if you can recover any parts of that mech, including any modules, which you can then add to your mech to gain abilities. So we roll on the table, You'll be able to salvage stuff depending on how high you roll. If you roll low, then there's nothing recoverable from the mech at all. There's area salvaging, where you can search across an entire area and see if there's any salvage in, left in it. We've got salvaging non-mechs. We've got cargo capacity, because of course each mech can only carry so much stuff back. So when you destroy enemy mechs, when you find stuff, you can't necessarily carry all that stuff home with you. And then we've got the downtime section, where you have to pay upkeep because you've got your home base to keep running. You split the salvage between everybody. And then we've got repairing and healing, scrapping and trading, crafting and customizing, where you can spend the scrap that you've found to install modules and improve your mechs. And then you've got relaxing after the game as well. So that's a quick look at Salvage Union, or at least the 1.5 quick start version of it. And it looks to be a lot of fun. It's not quite a full role-playing game with tons of skills and things the way that most games I cover tend to be, but it does look to be a stripped-down and very fun way. The way Shadow of Mog was an interesting stripped-down version of role-playing as well, without as many rules and things to get in the way. I really like the combat in it, and here on page 68, 69 and onwards, we've got a lot of enemy mechs and things, which is 
things which weren't really in the 1.3 or 1.2 rules that I looked through before. So we've got things like mules here, scrappers, threshers, mirror balls, different types of combat mechs you might come up against, um, zonas, brawlers, gophers, um, what's that, an Avantis long saddle pattern, hussars, We've got stats for different humanoids, so just different people you might come up against, and creatures, so wasteland bears, irradiated scorpions, um, a wasteland artel. And then we've got biotitans, um, massive big creatures that you fight in your mechs as well. They're really starting to flesh out the game, and it's absolutely looking excellent. I'm so glad I decided to back it. Looking forward to seeing my full copy fairly soon. But if you're interested in it at all, You'll be able to download the PDF, I'll put the link in the description down below, and I'll put a link to be able to pre-order it as well in the link down below, in a link down below. But anyway, I think I've witted on for quite long enough as usual, so thank you very much for watching. But, as always, most of all, you look after yourselves, and I'll catch you later. Bye now.